The term Dark Horse originated in the early 19th century and is described as a candidate or competitor about whom little is known but who unexpectedly wins or succeeds. It was originally used in the horse racing but is now universal to all sports, including soccer or football if you live across the pond. This MLS season, there are many teams that could shock us all and win the cup. Today, we'll be going over three dark horses that could potentially win the crown. Like always, if you enjoy our content, brother, please Hulk smash that button and subscribe. What are you waiting for? This is Binge Week Mania. Where are you going to be when bench games come knocking on your front doorstep with some dope-ass content? The first stallion on our list is the Colorado Rapids. This is the most complete Colorado team ever seen. Starting back to front, their defense looks reliable. Now, not the best D in the league, but they'll get the goddamn job done. A back line consisting of Sam Vines, Abubakar, Austin Trusty, and Keegan Rosenberry is young and it is hungry. This is a wall that's gonna be very hard to break down. Trusty and Vines are in the upswing of their careers, and I could see a good season propelling both of them to a big team across the pond. In the midfield, you got MLS veteran Kellen Acosta. Captain Jack Price, and designated player Eunice Nam Lee, a formidable midfield indeed. Kellen may not play the best for the national team, but he sure as hell plays great in burgundy and blue. Jack Price has been the anchor for quite some time now in Commerce City. Yet Eunice Nam Lee, if he can reach his potential, he will be a threat for years to come. I know he didn't have the best 2020 season, but he was still new to the league. Expect Nam Lee to turn it up a couple notches this season. In the attack, we have our stud, our lord, our savior, Jonathan Lewis, MLS Cup finalist Benazé, newcomer Michael Barrios, past rookie of the year Andre Shinashiki, center forward Diego Rubio, and to top it off, Yaya frickin' Torre. Oh wait, no, wrong Yaya. There we go. The attack looks lethal, especially on the wings. So much depth can be found in the squad. Michael Barrios was a perfect addition this offseason and will complement the forwards in the attack quite well. As of right now, Colorado is not a team to be taken lightly. Another dark horse this season is Nashville SC. Last season, everyone counted them out and said they sucked, but in reality, they did not suck. They were actually, like, really good, and this season they have the talent to even be better. Their defense was the third best in the league last season, and it looks to be more or less the same for this year. Walker Zimmerman, he's on my fantasy team, everybody join. One defender of the year, and Daniel Lovitz and Alistair Johnston were superstars down the left and right hand flanks. Defense is the least of my concerns with the Music City. Only real concern is the goalie, Joe friggin' Willis. Other than that, this team looks to be a surprise contender. Their attack was revamped with the new additions of Rodrigo Panera from Danubio FC and CJ Sapong from the Chicago Fire. These two signings, coupled with their core of Leol Cadiz and Hani Mukhtar, looks to be lethal. If not for Walker, Hani would be the most valuable player to the squad. His creativity and innovative thinking makes him a player to watch. And now, this season, he'll have plenty of options to dish the ball to. And how could you talk about Nashville without mentioning Dax McCarty, the goddamn captain? His leadership in the middle of the park is what glues this team together. Without him, there is no Nashville. And without Nashville, there is no him. If I was a betting man, I would put down a couple Benjis on Smashville to win the goddamn cup. Would get a crazy return if that did not being the case. Hmm, gonna have to think about this. And now, on to the final sleeper. And the biggest hot take in Bench King's hot take history. FC Cincinnati. Yes, I know what you're thinking. But Kings, this team sucks. Only piece of silverware they're winning is the wooden spoon. And to that, I would say you may not be wrong, but I'm gonna go out of the whim and say this team looks all right. During the offseason, they had to make some improvements, and to that, they did. Brazilian striker Brenner was brought in for a whopping $13 million. Center attacking mid. 
Luciana Acosta for 3 million. And left back, Ronald Malarita was brought in for 500k in game. These are all massive upgrades and will for sure boost the quality on the pitch. Even though they lost Kendall Waston during the winter window, their back line still looks strengthened. Compared to last year with the signing of Madarita and Gustavo Valencia on loan from SD Yorkies, their midfield looks even stronger with Alan Cruz, Luciano Costa, and Kubo. There is no need for Frankie Amaya when you got these three Dons on the squad. And now, to their attack, the strongest part of this goddamn team, and maybe even the strongest attack in the goddamn league. Renner and Jurgen Lacadia. Holy shit. This is a front two you would see on a top end Bundesliga or League Un team. Not in the goddamn MLS. At only 21 years of age, Renner was a starter for Sao Paulo last season and banged in 11 goals. And Jurgen Lacadia was a beast when he was on PSV notching in 9 goals in 15 games in the 2017-2018 season. This tag team has the ability to dismantle almost every single major league soccer team. If since he plays, how they look on paper, then you know they might just not suck. If you enjoyed this video, brother, and you want to see more content just like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, brother. Oh, this has been day four of Binge Week. Where are you going to be, brother, when Bench Kings come knocking on your door with the best MLS content in the history of MLS history?